Joining me now is the president's chief congressional negotiator, Mark Short. Mr. Short, welcome back to Meet the Press. Chuck, thanks for having me back again. All right, we got a ton of stuff to get to. I'll go ahead and start with the Russia probe simply because uh, over the last 48 hours, half of his tweets have simply been on Russia and Comey um, and then sporadic ones on a whole number of issues that we are going get, to get into, though. But his focus this weekend in particular on the Russia probe, it seems to be almost as if it's consuming him. Why is that? Chuck, I think he's responding to a lot of the coverage that uh, mainstream media is putting on this. But I think the administration remains focused on doing the things that we promised. I think you see that the economy has unemployment at 4.1 percent, the lowest in 17 years. You see 5 million Americans have received either a bonus or a wage increase since the tax plan passed. Deregulation continues. We're continuing to make progress in putting uh, conservative judges on the courts. So the administration stays focused on the business. And does it hurt your ability to tell those stories when the president spends his time focused on Russia? I just did. I mean, no, I don't think it does hurt our ability to do that. We're, we're constantly out there making the cases how the tax plan is helping Americans, how deregulation is helping the economy, how we have a booming economy with 3% GDP, which is the first time the Obama years averaged 1.8% GDP. So no, I think the American people are feeling it and seeing it and they appreciate it. I want to ask you a couple questions about a couple tweets referring to the Mueller probe. Mm -hmm. Here's one he did on Friday night. Uh, James Comey illegally leaked classified documents to the press in order to generate a special counsel? Question. Therefore, the special counsel was established based on an illegal act. Does everybody know what that means? Let me ask you, what does that mean? Chuck, I remember there was a time when Republicans opposed special counsels in principle because they felt like they had unchartered uh, terrain and that there was no check and balance on them. Mm -hmm. We've seen special counsels that have abused their, their roles from both Republicans and Democrats. Republicans fell in love with the special counsel during the 1990s when a whitewater investigation turned into an investigation about a 21-year intern having sexual relations with the president of the Oval Office. Special counsels have challenges and they continue to go wide-ranging. This presidency, this administration has cooperated, provided thousands of documents. Tactors spent millions of dollars on this investigation. And to date, we continue to cooperate without evidence of collusion. So, yes, I think the president expresses a lot of frustration for where the special counsel investigation is. But he, does he believe it, its scope has been fair so far? I think that we all have frustration that we believe that the scope has gone well beyond what was intended to be investigations into uh, meddling in the election. And I think that uh, the House and the Senate have had their own investigations. The House has completed those. We're anxious for the Senate to complete his. Uh, there's a report in the Washington Post that the Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, hinted that if Rod Rosenstein was fired, he would resign. Uh, can you uh, uh, enlighten us on that? I was not part of that conversation, Chuck, and there's no, I don't have any information. No information either way? No. Um, do you believe that um, Republicans on Capitol Hill would be supportive if the president fired Mr. Rosenstein, uh, Rosenstein or uh, Mr. Sessions? You know, Chuck, I think that I've been on your show. You've had me several times. I'm grateful. And we always have the same conversation about when's the president going to fire one of these guys? No, I'm not it's, saying uh, he it's, himself brings it's it up. It's like, I, I, it's it's like, like we don't we It's don't like there's an hourglass waiting there to see, okay, when's he going to fire Rosenstein? When's he going to fire Mueller? We have the same conversation. As far as I know, the president has no intention of firing these individuals. Right. But it's always as far as I know and the president. He never it's says definitively. Why not? It's the, he has no Why intention. He say, definitively. It's not going to happen. This we, investigation is going to run its course, period. End of story. I'll never because I don't know how far off the investigation is going to veer. Right now, he has no intention of firing them. But we keep having the same conversation again and again and again. The president says, I have no intention of firing them. But the media keeps having every single day, every single week, when's the president going to fire them? The investigation on, is ongoing. We've complied in every possible way with providing thousands of documents and, again, millions of dollars of taxpayer expense with no evidence of collusion to the end. Let me ask you about the release of the Comey memos. Why was it so important for the president to have them released? I don't know to the extent that it was important for the president. I think this was pushed by House Republicans who were anxious to, I think the one that they were most anxious to get out and to show was the Comey himself saying the president said to him, mm -hmm. if there's evidence of Russian interference, I want you to get to the bottom of it. I think that that is counter to the narrative in the media that continues to say that the president's trying to obstruct justice or to obstruct the investigation. That memo shows it, the president specifically was advising Comey to get to the bottom no, of it. No, in fact, I concur. It seems like the president was specifically saying investigate the dossier. I think the Would president, you go as far as it, it, it agreeing that, that that's what those memos seem to indicate? Uh, perhaps. I mean, I, I can't put in what exactly Comey was thinking in, in his own words, but, but perhaps that's fair. Uh, let me move to North Korea. And uh, he's been tweeting about it this yeah. morning about, um, about it. But I want to put up something that Ari Fleischer, a veteran of the Bush administration, who's, who sort of has some scar tissue on North yeah. Korea, and he writes this. Call me a cynic, but based on history, one, 
They'll suspend today and begin air again tomorrow. Two, they have alternative ways, sites to carry out their mission. And three, they're lying now or will lie tomorrow. This is how NK behaves. Remember the agreed framework. What has the United States gotten from North Korea? He's done temporary everything, but he's not made a pledge on denuclearization mm -hmm. this last time. He hasn't released these hostages yet. Have We've given him the meeting. That in itself is a huge mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. What have we gotten in return? I would tell you that what one is is the agreement to stop testing, which is something North Korea has not done before. We also, though, have cautious optimism, Chuck. We are cautious. You've hear, heard the president say many times, we're going to keep up maximum pressure. We're not going to stop that until they denuclearize. So as far as having a meeting, he's also said, I can walk away from the table. But, Chuck, it's all the more important reason as to why we need to get a secretary of state confirmed sooner rather than later, because these are important issues pressing before the American people. But if... I guess denuclearization, what does that mean to the president and what do you think that means to the North Koreans? Do you think you guys agree on what that word even means? I think there has to have a sit down conversation to get to that point, but I think that from our perspective it means full denuclearization, no longer having nuclear weapons that can be used um, in, in warfare against any of our allies. All right, uh, another topic here. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was asked about this idea that I know that you guys are working with House Republicans on, a rescission bill, um, which in non-Washington speaks means he's simply uh, re uh, pulling back some of the spending that you guys agreed to in that bill that, that I know the president wasn't happy with. Here's what Mitch McConnell said about it. You can't make an agreement one month and say, okay, we really didn't mean it, and come back the next month and say, oh, we really didn't mean our agreement. You were in the room. Yeah. You agreed to these negotiations. What does this say? I mean, are you guys, why, why should Democrats ever negotiate with you again? Sure, I think there's, there's several things. One, we would ask the Senate to have patience and look at the package that gets sent up. Did you know that between President Ford and President Clinton, there are over 1,200 rescissions submitted to Congress? The last two presidents have chosen not to utilize that. Okay, but why but do it, this if it, Mitch McConnell says you don't want to do it? You're just going to divide the Because he hasn't seen the package. In many cases, what I think you'll see us putting forward are dollars that have been left over in program for years that are not being utilized. But second, we did have negotiations, and we did have a top-line agreement about what we should spend on military and how we should get the first funding to build the wall in over 10 years, mm -hmm. the first actual appropriations. But nobody saw the text, Chuck. The president said that. Nobody saw the text of the bill within 24 hours because the process in Congress is broken. The last time Congress um, finished an appropriations process on time was 22 years ago, in 1996. So then they dump an appropriations bill that says, okay, you can either keep government open or shut it down. Here's your chance to fund the military and do what you want on the border, or you can shut down government. So it's a, it's a Hobbesian choice for the president has to face. If Congress would do its yeah. job and actually get appropriations bill on time, then there probably wouldn't be rescissions packages. Uh, very quickly, Scott Pruitt still have the confidence of the president, I ask, because now there's news that indeed the person he was renting um, a room from, uh, a lobbyist he was renting a room from, did have um, something before the EPA, did have an official meeting with him. Uh, that's not very drain the swampy. Uh, that's fair, but, but Scott Pruitt's doing a phenomenal job, and the president's happy with him. And, Full uh, confidence. Yes. There's an, what would it take for him to lose confidence? Uh, Chuck, I'm, that's a hypothetical. I don't know. Right now, uh, Scott Pruitt's doing a great job at EPA, and we're excited to have him there. All right. Mark Short, uh, President's uh, Chief uh, Congressional Liaison. Good to see you, sir. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here, and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.